What's going on everyone? Welcome back. We are continuing from yesterday's video talking about last month's adventure into three times per week bench frequency as well as this weird little linear progression thing that I've been doing the past couple of weeks. In fact, a month straight. We've done four weeks now. So basically what I want to say really quickly before we get into the video is that it dawned on me as I was editing last night that perhaps the reason that linear progression on bench is going so well is because I'm really not doing too much in terms of movements that would really, really tax my recovery. You know, my lower body training volume is almost a zero. I mean, I'm doing the basic movements to sort of, you know, kind of kind of ramp into, you know, my body used to, you know, putting weights on my back and pulling things off the floor, as well as getting a little bit of volume on my legs. But realistically, I haven't seriously trained my legs in a very, very long time. So that is going to be great for my recovery because number one, bench is really easy to recover from. And number two, just in general, fatigue is going to not inhibit me in any way. So, you know, I was doing exercises for my whole body. I wasn't neglecting my back, for instance. Every single time I went into bench, I did my back work. I did some delts. I did some arms. Um, and sometimes I even did some legs. You know, I would go into bench. Occasionally, I would hop under the squat bar and do, a f do my sets or, you know, do some deads, do some Romanians. Uh, there was a couple of times where I did leg press, ham curls, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it wasn't like I was doing nothing for everything else. I was still, you know, trying to keep a bit of a well-rounded routine so that I didn't atrophy. But I definitely wasn't doing a lot in terms of, like, things that would tr make me try to grow, which probably was a mistake, but I just wanted to take time off because, you know, I didn't want to do anything that would aggravate my sciatic pain and most back work did a little bit. Like I had to take out rows. Um, I had to take out pull-ups for a little bit, surprisingly. Um, a lot of leg work did. Most of the leg work in the beginning was like, um, very, very small isolation movements. Um, like the, the biggest compound I would do was maybe lunges. That was okay. Um, wasn't great, but it was okay. I eventually took legs completely out while I let them recover. Uh, and then I finally reintroduced things like leg press and ham curls back in. Um, and eventually last week I ended up doing some RDLs and they felt pretty good. So I was all right. As well as, you know, putting like 50% on the bar, doing a sets of five, then next, then the week after would be 60%, then it would be like 65% and stuff, stuff like that. I had to take overhead work completely out as well because overhead work actually bothered me um, also. So there's there was no overhead press, there was no dumbbell presses. Uh, the most I ever did overhead was like some machine um, shoulder press or like some plate loaded shoulder press. I don't know if you guys have plate loaded uh, machine presses at your gym, but I do. Um, and at the end of the day, I decided to take that completely out and uh, focus on benching as my primary pressing. All of that is to say, wondering if the linear progression is due to the fact that I don't have a lot of fatigue in general. So we shall find out because I will experiment with that in the next block for sure. But for now, let's get into the footage. So we are in week three, day one, 230 pounds on the bar for our eights. At this point, I've pretty much gotten the hang of everything and benching is starting to feel really, really nice. There's like, there's no like adapting at this point. I've basically adapted to this style of training. My body is used to the three times per week frequency. Not that I ever thought it was like, weird and I needed time to adapt to it. But when I first started, I was starting to get worried that I was going to get like a little nick here and there. Like I, I was starting to get a little bit of a wrist tendonitis flare up. I uh, started to feel like maybe my shoulder was going to get a little bit overworked. But at this point, at week three, I felt great. Like my recovery was fantastic. Everything was moving really smooth. And from this point on, it's PR city. 
I set PRs every single time I stepped into the gym. Again, weird, because I considered myself an intermediate lifter, and I don't know many beginners who are benching two plates plus, but here I am, literally making linear progress. So it's kind of like, again, me saying that maybe we should get rid of these titles or put these arbitrary names on things because it just goes to show like it confuses people and I think that uh, it does more harm than good. Like I said, why do something more complex when something simple is going to get you gains faster anyway? So, you know, I... <laughs> I mean, the progress is there. I mean, that AMRAP for the 230 was 10 pounds, or 10 reps, sorry. Um, that was an all-time PR. This 245 for sixes, the AMRAP for that, I have my notes down here, by the way. That's what I'm looking down. Uh, 245 for AMRAP for today was nine. And that was the same AMRAP as 240 from a previous day. And that 240 was a touch and go. So not only did I add five pounds to my nine rep max, but I also did this nine rep max paused and that was touch and go. So I'm not even too sure how much you get out of a touch and go realistically, but I mean, this is a major win in my opinion. So very, very confused as to, you know, why this is labeled as sort of a beginner routine, but I'm very thankful that I'm still making progress all the time. Again, interesting to see whether or not I'm actually going to be able to continue this while the training volume starts to increase, while the general fatigue starts to increase, but uh, we'll leave that for when the time comes. So this is 260 pounds for fours. When I injured my knee during the summertime or during the early fall, um, I had a program that I was doing that was similar to this, not like similar in like structure, but similar in the philosophy where I was basically just doing upper body all the time. And uh, what I was doing there was I was only benching twice per week. I was also using linear progression, funnily enough. But uh, I had an intensity day and a volume day. So my intensity day was triples. I do three sets of three, and then I would do two sets of five with cat sets, so compensatory acceleration. And my volume day was three sets of five, or was two sets of five and then an AMRAP. And each week I'd add a set until I got four sets of five and then an AMRAP, and then I would add weight. So my heaviest triple I got up to was 200 and I believe like maybe 50 pounds, maybe 255, maybe 260, I don't remember. But today, that was 260 for two sets of four and an AMRAP of five. And honestly, guys, that five, I could have probably squeezed out two more, I think. I don't know why I stopped, but I did. So uh, that's an all-time PR. Now, here's where I screwed up. Like, I don't know what the hell was wrong with me today, but I forgot to bump weight on my bench, and I ended up doing 230 for two weeks in a row, like an idiot. So that was really, really stupid of me. Um, but, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think I was looking at a different logbook, or I forgot to look, or sometimes I forget to log things like an idiot. Like, again, getting back into the routine has, like, caused me to not be so, like, on top of things. And, like, making sure I'm logging stuff properly is one of them. But the good news here is I set a PR again anyway. So I did 230 pounds. But instead of 10 for the AMRAP, I hit it for 12. So I'm not too sure um, what that means, basically. Like, if I hit it for 10 last week, or the previous week, I guess it was, well, it was two weeks ago at this point. Because the start of the, the, anyway, whatever. If I hit 230 for 10 one week, that's a five pound bump. But if I hit it for 12 the next week, that's a 10 pound bump. So I'm not too sure. I think I'm just going to bump it by 10 and uh, just take the 240 and, and see what happens. 
So here we have 255 pounds for our sixes. The AMRAPs are starting to slow down in terms of rate of progression. Before I could get maybe 15 pounds out of an AMRAP as far as like the increase goes, um, and maybe 10 at worst. But now it's starting to be like, okay, we're just going five pounds, five pounds, five pounds, because this AMRAP was eight reps with 255 pounds. Again, still a great PR. Like that is a new eight rep max for me. And it was like 10 to 15 pounds ahead of where my eight rep max was before. So your guess is as good as mine as to what's happening. I'm literally only going up. I'm literally like increasing every week, increasing every workout. I don't know if it's the DUP. I don't know if it's the lack of fatigue. I don't know if it's the fact that um, I'm benching three times per week. Um, but I will take it. That is for sure. So, yes, our final set of this training block is 265 pounds for our fours and um my am rep on this day was six so this was one more rep and five more pounds better than the week prior again don't know what's going on but i am not complaining i'm perplexed really is what it is i'm not complaining but i'm definitely perplexed because i i thought it was an intermediate lifter and uh clearly i'm not so the task at hand at this point is trying to set up a training program in which i can kind of continue to progress at a rate while also building muscle a power building program that I construct myself because I do have bodybuilder tendencies. As Russell Orhe once said, it's a power lifter with bodybuilding tendencies. I feel like that describes me pretty accurately because I want to be strong as fuck. That's the most important thing. But I also want to be massive as well as the fact that I'm cutting. So I have to do all of this while in a calorie deficit. And that in itself is going to be a challenge, too. Um, and almost maybe an impossibility, uh, you know, especially with the bench press. That's why, you know, I'm cooling on the bench press for now. Um, like if I basically my attitude with the bench is if I can hit a 300 bench um, within the next few months. Right. Or maybe even a 315 bench, like the top end would be a three plate bench. So between 300 and 315, let's say, if I can hit that in the next few months, then I don't feel like I need to set a bench PR for a while. I can focus on my cutting. And if the bench goes down, the bench goes down. What are you going to do? But that's the last month of benching. To bring it back, my eights went from 210 to 230, and they probably should have gone to 235 at least, maybe even 240. So... Added a lot of my eights. My sixes went from 225 pounds to 255 pounds. That's a 30 pound increase. And my fours went from 240 pounds to 265 pounds. That is a 25 pound increase. And that was in a month. So what's this doing for my water max? I don't know. I need to spend a good bit of time writing out my training program and my progression scheme for the next block, two, three. I'm thinking a 12 week block, uh, 12 weeks, three blocks, four weeks each block type of setup here. Um, and I'm gonna get on that kind of like right now. Excited, I'm still excited. I'm excited to see what's gonna happen. Can I bench three plates this year while cutting? Is it possible? I don't know, I guess we'll find out.